is the Transformers Generations Legacy Evolution Deluxe Class Armada Universe Hotshot. The figure is part of the first wave of these Deluxe Class figures for the Legacy Evolution line. Uh, but some of the uh, online, online sellers are calling it the fourth wave of the Legacy uh, Deluxe Class figures. Either way, it's the same thing. Here's a look at the brand new Evolution packaging. It's basically similar to... Uh, the previous legacy uh, box uh, box or packaging. It's got the open window, uh, fantastic artwork on the side of the box, and that Evo Fusion gimmick that came with the Evolution line. Now, I picked up this figure from my local Toy Kingdom store and it retails for about 1,900 1, pesos or approximately 34 US dollars. The prices are just unbeatable here in manila uh, oh my goodness uh, i can't believe how much these things cost now let's get this guy out of packaging and here is armada universe hotshot out of packaging and it's the figure is a mixed bag for me i'm not entirely sure whether i like this figure or not the figure is not horrible it's not a complete epic fail i, I said it's a semi fail because th there are elements about this figure that's preventing me from really liking it and and calling it a, a, an amazing figure it's i don't know exactly what it is i do have an idea of, of some of the things i don't like about it but there are more things i like about this figure than than i dislike so it's it's not a horrible figure but it's not an amazing figure so it's pretty okay. I'll probably go as far as say right now from the be in the beginning of this video that this is probably going to be the best Generations, updated Generations figure of Hotshot we've gotten from Hasbro and Takara Tomy because if you remember that old universe Hotshot was just, it was not a lot of fun. It was very difficult to transform, very difficult to pose and all that. And this one, this one's actually a lot more fun. So, Let's take a closer look at the details of this figure. So head to toe, the figure stands at about 13 centimeters tall or about five and one eighth inches tall. Let's do the comparisons first. Here he is with a couple of other generations figures. Uh, we have the G2 Leadfoot or the Mirage mold. We have the smaller deluxe class mold of Huffer. And we have fellow Armada Universe uh, figure. We have Voyager class Armada Starscream. So in terms of scale, uh, I think they got it right. I think he's just about a right size deluxe, at least for the Generations line, which is at par with the War for Cybertron trilogy uh, figures. He's okay. He's right there. And against Starscream, I think the scale is correct. Now, if you watch the cartoon back in the early 2000s, uh, Armada, uh, Transformers Armada, I actually like what they've done with this figure. He well, He's less beefy and bulky, but he does have the proper aesthetic uh, to represent Armada Hotshot. This figure is probably the closest one we have uh, in, in terms of all the Generations figures and even compared to the original uh, Hotshot figure. If you still own the original Hotshot figure, he looks something like this. Um, that was still a pretty good figure back in the day, but he was a little too clunky. Uh, he had a lot of good gimmicks to him, and he was very, the aesthetic was very close to how he looked like in the cartoon. Now, Hasbro tried to take it a notch higher by releasing a Generations hotshot in the, I believe, the Universe line. And it looks something like this. Uh, I remember I did a review of this figure, and... Uh, he was he was very difficult to transform. Not a lot of fun. Uh, but one thing that this figure had that this new legacy figure does not have is he did come. This figure came with a minicon called Jolt. It was a red helicopter which usually accompanied uh, Hotshot. Just to refresh your memory, uh, Jolt looks something like this. And if you look at the accessories that this new Hotshot figure has, he does have uh, the engine block blaster that he did have in the original toy now on to the details of this figure you can see the sculpt is done beautifully there's a lot of very very nice 
uh, compact compression of the car bits right here. You get a little bit of a backpack, but that's fine. That's part of his aesthetic. That's part of the design of the figure. What's nice also is that we don't see the car doors anymore on his arms. And the car doors are right here uh, on his shins. And it actually forms the the part, front part of his legs, which is very accurate, accurate to the cartoon. He does have his blaster that turns into his engine block, which I, sh I mentioned earlier. It's been painted very nicely in silver and black. Very cool. He's got a beautiful head sculpt. I mean, I'm really liking this hotshot head sculpt. It's not as cartoon accurate as the original, but it is is a very stylized, modern, updated look to him. And what's nice about it is he's got this visor that you can actually fold down. And you can use it. It's a little loose once you have it down, but it tightens up as you put it up. Uh, it, it's done in this nice teal clear plastic that's been painted in gunmetal gray. I like the fact that they've managed to do the shoulder pads or the shoulder armor with, without really hindering articulation for this figure. The backpack has his cannon, the axle of the, uh, the car, the front wheels of the car. You fold it up like this and, and, and turn it like that and it forms his, his bazooka. And I thought this was a pretty neat uh, gimmick that they've added for this figure, very close to the original toy. The box art shows it positioned this way, but I honestly think uh, it looks better this way with a hollowed out rim. So you put it back like that. Articulation for the figure, he's got a swivel neck. I wish it would have been a ball jointed neck, but it's a swivel neck. And I don't think they could have done too much with it because the transformation requires the head to fold down and all that. He's got a waist swivel, mainly because of transformation. Uh, shoulders have, are on hinges. So you go forward and backward with the arms, in and out. You got a bicep swivel. A hinge elbow. Um, he's got a some hinges on the hips. You do the splits, forward and backward. You got a thigh swivel. You got a hinge knee. It's not as solid. The ankles have the rocker tilt that snaps on. And the feet can go, toes at least, can go up and down because of transformation. There is some mismatched red plastic. I don't know if you can see it right here. The hips are darker than the thighs. Honestly, I don't know why they could have done that mistake because the red plastic is unpainted except for the chest. So they don't need to paint anything here. I don't understand why they couldn't have just made this one, this hips from the same plastic. Was it a, I don't know, was it a design issue because this one was too brittle to bore a hole into for the rivet? I, I don't know, but there you can obviously see that mismatch in color. It's okay, not complaining too much. Let me just address uh, plastic quality uh, right now just to be over and done with. It, it, there's nothing wrong with plastic quality. The plastic quality of this figure is akin to uh, what we saw with, with Scrap Hook. And the plastic is, is just on point on this one. I have nothing to complain about except maybe the car bits. The car bits are probably the only soft plastic. It's soft, but it doesn't feel cheap. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, it, it it doesn't it doesn't quite feel like a knockoff plastic, but it is soft. There is some give to it, and it, it's probably because of the thinness of the plastic, the way they mold it. But you can see the arms are made of this really nice glossy gunmetal gray plastic, which is really really nice. It's very solid. Same goes for the thighs, the chest, torso, the arm, the arms and the legs. They're very they're made of very good plastic. Paint apps, uh, like I mentioned, very little paint apps. You got some silver here, Autobot logo right there, paint app on the face. And again, mismatched uh, paint apps on the yellow with the plastic. The plastic is a bright canary yellow and they used like a, oh, I don't know. This is, this is like a, a dark lemon yellow, uh, muted lemon yellow color. We'll, we'll see it in alt mode, but it, it, it's, it looks pretty horrible. So let's get him into his car mode. Okay, uh, put the weapon off to the side. You want to raise the shoulder pads. You want to rotate the arms this way. At this point, you want to go ahead and rotate the waist. You want to fold down that chest, fold up the head, and just tuck that back in. The, the, the backpack is going to be raised up like this. And there's some pegs right here. 
they're going to tab onto the chest. And it's going to stay like that. Okay. The spoilers I'm going to fold back like this. Feet, I'm going to transform this way. The windows or the windshield, they're on ball joints. I'm going to rotate them up like this, like this. Go ahead and fold out these uh, parts of the roof. Not like this. Okay. And then the toes, you want to fold them up like that. Make sure they're locked in. Fold up the door panels. And then you want the knees, the joints of the knees, to just fold out like this. Not like that. And they're going to collapse onto the arms and the upper torso. Okay. So this peg right there, you got to move it out so that you can fold the doors like that. Now, uh, the di most difficult part of the transformation, certified peg of doom. There's a big, big peg right here on the back of one of his heels. Instead of just snapping it, the instructions tell you just snap it together. I found out that it's best if you just slide it onto the other heel like that, and then you can tab the two parts of the hood together. And then the same way when you're trying to uh, transform him back into robot mode, you just slide that peg out. Um, I've already like chipped a bit of that peg right there. You can see uh, discoloration, that's a chip because I, I just really pushed it, I followed the instructions. I mean, I pushed it and pulled it out and that's, that's what happened. So be careful with that. So go ahead and slide that peg in, slide that other peg in right there. And then the roof, and windshield uh, once you've compressed the knees they are going to tab onto the backpack and all that's left really is to close in the doors okay and then the gun blaster is going to attach right here up in front as part of his engine chassis or the engine block and there you go there is legacy armada hot shot in his uh in his car mode it's a it's a very tight fit the wheels don't actually roll properly uh they're okay these are on snap snap joints so he kind of rolls okay he should clear the floor with no problem but somehow the wheels are just scraping everywhere the back wheels are fine but it's the front wheels that aren't rolling properly. Now, my issue with this alt mode is, I mean, look at it, it looks like Hotshot. It, I don't know, but it kind of feels too wide or the proportions are wrong and the wheels look to be a little bit too small. If you remember the old toy, you can see that the rear part of the car, it should be much wider than the front part. He should form a little bit like a, like a, tri a triangle or sort of like an arrow. Uh, should be arrow shaped. Uh, he's trying to do this, but I think the front part is too wide. And look at the ratio of the size of the wheels with the car. The wheels on the original toy, I think they're much bigger. They actually look better in comparison with these new wheels. The wheels look too small. I don't know if, if what I'm trying to say is coming across to you guys as a valid <laughs> description of this car mode, but you, you can see how a little bit disproportioned this car mode is. I feel like it's too flat and wide. It should be wider here and sharper here. And I feel that the wheels are just, just a tad bit too small. And it's not horrible. I'm not overly complaining about it. I'm not saying it's a crappy alt mode. I just feel it's a little off. And that, that's the thing that's preventing me from really treating this figure as an amazing figure. Now, if you want some comparisons, uh, here we have uh, War for Cybertron Trilogy Sunstreaker, the Earthrise line, and then we have the Select Hubcap. Uh, I, I took the liberty of getting yellow cars just to, to make the comparisons easier. So in alt mode, he is a medium-sized deluxe class figure, just a regular-sized deluxe class figure. He's not big, he's not small. And so some final thoughts on this Legacy Evolution Armada Universe hotshot. Uh, it's not a horrible figure. It's not terrible. I don't hate it. But it's not a terrific figure. It just did not blow me away. The plastic is on point. Engineering is sound. 
uh, but the alt mode, the shape of the alt mode, and on top of the fact that it's missing Jolt, the Minicon, they could have added just a small figure just, just to complete the homage to this to this character is missing. Uh, it, it just it's just gonna bring down the rating uh, for this figure for me. It's definitely a lot more enjoyable than that old universe hotshot, but I just think it's just missing just a few more things to make this an awesome, awesome figure. So it's going to get a seven out of 10 for me. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this Transformers Generations Legacy Evolution Armada Universe Deluxe Class Hotshot. Hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.